Violet Ombua is the CEO and founder of Networking in Hills. She is a serial entrepreneur and quintessentially a multi-potentialist with interest in tech, health, along with house and garden businesses. She is an experienced marketing and communications professional. Violet knows the importance of networking and growing one's social capital for long-term success and happiness, and has built a platform for women to build their lives they've always dreamed of. Violet was driven to grow networking in Hills from her passion for women empowerment. She's been working in this area for over a decade, and during that time, has changed over 5,000 women's lives by giving them a forum to interact and grow. This has resulted in wonderful friendships, career, and business growth, with some women currently holding top ranks in government. Not to be left behind, Violet has also been tapped for good business opportunities, speaking engagements, even being an MC moderator in several events. And she says she's open for business. <laughs> Violet loves education and knowledge, which has seen her take up several professional courses, including women and leadership from the European University, Business University. Currently, she's a PMP candidate and will soon be a certified project manager. She has plans to pursue a law degree in near future. Violet is a writer and an aspiring author. She loves photography as well. Violet has worked for several reputable companies and non-for-profit organizations where she has seen the power of networking and collaboration in action. She has been featured in several magazines and has won various entrepreneur awards. She enjoys mentoring, which is her way of paying it forward in regards to the guidance and support she has received in her professional journey and entrepreneurship. She has been recognized as a Yali mentor and a Yes mentor. Violet loves her friends, family, TV shows, and her book club sessions. She enjoys trying new restaurants and new hobbies as well. She is a hopeless house plant keeper and even hopeless, more hopeless romantic. <laughs> One thing is certain though, anywhere there is a gathering for women empowerment, Violet will highly likely be in the mix. Her motto is, go and grow. And we agree with you, Violet. We are here to grow. And help me bring to the stage our very own Violet. I am not an aspiring author anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I'm a published author. Hi everyone. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, if it's not obvious, I'm really excited to be here this day. I am so happy that this has finally come to pass. Um, Mr. Adido, I owe you my gratitude. Um, Mr. Adido pursued me a few years ago to put my story in writing. But at the time, I was I was in a strangulation by self uh, what is it called, the imposter syndrome? Yeah, I was kicking my behind very badly. So I didn't think I had anything to say or anything worthwhile at that point. But um, as fate would have it, and thank you for pursuing me yet again, he came and told me, hey, I think we should do this. And I said, okay, but can we do it in, in a small scale? Turns out that's exactly what he was thinking of doing. So I got the chance to put my words and a bit of my story in this book. I'm so excited, like, wow, I keep posting everywhere. I think my friends are sick of me by now, because this is all you see every morning. They need to be sick, right? Yeah, malaria? Yes. Uh, my name is Violet Tombo, as you've heard, and uh, she said I'm a hopeless plant keeper. I'm not a hopeless plant keeper. I kill them. <laughs> I can't keep a house plant. But yeah, I can keep uh, people happy. Um, I used to be a very shy kid, and so, a lot of my world was spent inside my mind. And my mom figured this out quickly, and she bought me books. She kept me in books. So many times you'd find me at home, and my nose is in a book. So I was the, we call them bookworms now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I was really a bookworm, and that's why I gained a lot of my linguistic skills. And um, 
thank God, you know, we grew up. A lot of us think that being uh, multilingual is kawaida, but it's not. A lot of us are multilingual. Although we think that you need to know Portuguese for you to call yourself multilingual, but no, the fact that you know Kikuyu, Kikamba, Kijalua, you can pick up pieces of this and the other, we are blessed to be multilingual. So I felt that there's not so many ways that we can express our hearts, that there's no language enough to express the story of our lives, except, you know, try to collect those ideas together and put them in a book, a chapter at a time. My story is broad, my story has been colorful, and I like how this book is colorful enough to sort of like translate that a little bit. And one of the things that I'm excited about this project is that I now have 11 other friends, 11 other mentors, 11 other speakers for the Talking in Hills, 11 other uh, guests for my Career Cruise podcast. I have 11 other friends by force. <laughs> because we can't go away with each other, isn't it? Yes, and I have 11 other people to walk the journey of life with. I'm excited to be um, a part of this project. It also got me to dig into myself and some parts that I sort of like wanted to keep away and not, you know, just present you the nice flower in front and not share with you the struggles, but the struggles are in here. I have highlighted them. If you want a deeper story, come for part B. But yes, I try to be as um, authentic as possible. The world nowadays pushes us to be only nice, glowy, glossy. And uh, we're not really encouraged to tell our stories. The ones where we feel not enough, where we feel like we don't, we, we, we don't, we're not making the cuts, you know? And I think a lot of us experience those moments, but it's not safe enough to express them. And you could be at the very height of your career, doing very well in your business, doing very well in your studies, approaching life with such amazing speed and grace, but because of how the lights are on all the time, you kind of feel like all the cracks are being seen and you're not even being given space to breathe space to think, space to even gauge what really am I doing. So we go on and on and on, and it's easy to wear a mask, you know, stop on a mask and keep it moving. But in this book, I have read stories of my fellow women who, as amazing as they are, and as wonderfully as they're doing in this life, and let it be encouragement for yourself to also rise, encouragement for yourself to also bring out the parts of you that you've hidden, the parts of you that are gathering dust, please dust them off. Let's do this together. Join us on this journey and let's meet at the very top because that's really where we were intended by God to go. In our different ways, we have different gifts. Not all of us, you know, we're not the same. Never, we'll never be. Even my sisters and I, we're not the same. My sisters and I in this book, <laughs> we're not the same. However, we all chose to put our hands on deck and make this project a reality. So I also want to invite you to put hands on deck for yourself, make the project of your life a reality. There's nothing that is, has missed you, nothing that's too far for you, but step by step, with the help that you're getting every day, with the mercies of God, we'll make it through. Amen? Amen. Enjoy your afternoon, and thank you so much for coming. I want to thank my family and my friends. Thank you so much. I love you all.